Okay, so let me just jump right into this. Um, I have a business partner who's actually in Live Good. He uh, used to live in the United States, right? Uh, but he moved to Malaysia. So I finally was able to get him in Live Good. And one of the biggest things that he was talking about was like, oh my, this is before, right? Oh my God, the, it costs more for the shipping than it did for the products, right? So nonetheless, he travels all around and, and now he's living in the Philippines, right? Uh, and so the other day he inboxes me on Messenger and says, hey, I just bought the international wellness pack, right? And and free shipping and this and this. So this is just the other day. So I said, well, keep me in the loop on, you know, timing and you receiving and all this. But just the sheer excitement of being able to log into the back office, pick a predetermined pack, right? With the multiple different things in there, pay under a hundred US dollars for it and have free shipping on the other side of the world for someone who's not from there, right? A person that's from here, I thought was absolutely remarkable because I think that it literally invigorated him and it it sparked something that he didn't have before. He was in, but you know, felt a type of way. And now he's in and can actually experience the products. And that's what we're saying helps people, right? So if you're not getting the products, then it's gonna be hard to be confident. Right. For a lot of people, it's going to be hard to be committed for a lot of people because you're focused on the thing that's finicky. Right. The money part alone. I, we want the money. I'm in business. Right. That's why it's a compensation plan attached to it. So I don't want us to ignore that that exists. But we have to have more in our substance of what we're doing here with Live Good, which helps us helps us. So I'm so excited for that because I've got people overseas that are now, you know, the fire is is kicking in. Um, so what I wanted to share with, with that in reference to him, his name is Quentin. Uh, he did a live the other day and I took some notes mm -hmm. and he's more of a spiritually gifted vessel, right? In that sense. So I sat there and I watched his live the other day and he had five points. And I told him I was going to talk about this on this call. Hopefully he's on here to see it. But I want you guys to, to realize just in general, he wasn't talking about live good. He was just talking about just in life. Okay. So here are these five things that I want you guys to, to take point of. Number one, he said, take new actions to go in a new direction, to go in a different direction. So if what you've been doing the last 30 days, the last 60 days, so on and so forth, you don't feel like um, inspired by that. Like you're just doing it because somebody told you to do this action to get a result. I want you to really tap into doing something different to get the result. It's okay. You have to explore. As a marketer, there's some science to it, but it's a lot of art to this, okay? And what works for one may not work for the other. What one says and speaks and how they come across cross may not be the way that you show up best to actually involve or attract your audience of people. So I want you to remember that try something new that is going to help you to get the result that you want to get. Number two, uh, Quentin said, get fired up, get fired. He said, focus on results, not risk. Now I want you to ponder on that for a second. Focus on results, not the risk. With live good, there is such very little to no risk that it's almost ridiculous that anyone would be focusing on risk. Like, what would I have to lose? That There's really nothing to lose here. Now, there could be something to lose, right? I mean, if you paid your, your membership fee, if you got started and you did not buy any products at all and you didn't benefit, well, then that could be a risk. But it's not a risk that was given to you because of luck and chance and live good doing something. It's because you simply did not take advantage of what you decided you wanted to purchase, right? You just did it. But there's literally no risk here. So ultimately, when you have very little to no risk in something, then it's pretty much upside. It's, it's pretty much all, I would give it like 99.99% upside, okay? It's no absolutes. So as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're focusing on the result that you want to get, whether it's a health result or um, a financial result or a help somebody else result or a, you know, spread the message and, you know, we love live good more, that type of message result. Um, that's what you want to focus on. And don't worry about all of the other I don't want to call them negative, but more the risky feeling types of things. OK, so get fired up. Number three thing um, is he said, finish what you start. 
finish what you start. Now, you know, those of us that are parents, uh, and Trisha was speaking about her son. You guys know I talk about my son a, a, a lot because it's it's so fitting, I feel, when when you're raising children and the principles and the and the morals and the things that we work to instill in them, how it is it's the same thing in business. It's just most times adults <laughs> don't fall back on those principles. Okay. They get sidetracked with a bunch of stuff. But what that really means is that if Josiah says, Hey, I want to play baseball. Okay. And, and we sign up, which we did the first year, he doesn't get to quit in the middle of the season, right? He would have to finish it until the end of the season. Now th that doesn't mean that he has to go on and play forever and ever and ever. It means if you sign up for a season, then you need to finish this thing through until the end of that season, we can reassess and then you can do something else. My mother was avid with that, right? I wanted to play the flute. So I did. She let me play the flute. I said, you're going to be in that choir or be in that band until the end of the school year. You're going to practice. You're going to be at every little recital. You're going to do, I'm going to buy this doggone flute. I'm going to buy the clean or end the case and you will practice once a day because you said you wanted to do it until that time is up now if the time is up and you decide you don't want to do it i'm fine with you rotating right i'm fine with that but guys you can't come into something like live good and and you didn't even give it a year right i mean we usually like to say in network marketing at least 18 months but you gave it 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> you you literally gave it 45 minutes to go and throw a post up there and nobody said anything or you got started for 90 days. And I know those are we work in cycles of 90 days, but the cycle, the end of the cycle is not the end of the period of time. That's just the end of the cycle within the period of time. So you can't quit within 90 days. Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Ben is not our parent. Right? He's not our parent. So he can't make you stay here until you finish at least an 18 month, you know, term. But you should want to have that type of commitment. Uh, you should want to. When, when you put your name to something, you should stand on that. And I teach my son, you don't have anything in this world but your name. And if you can't stand on what you put your name on, your integrity, what you agree to do, then you're better off not saying it or doing it or being a part of it at all. But to have behind do anything is not tolerated, is not tolerable in this house. And the Live Good house, you know, if I had to say it, like, we shouldn't tolerate that. We shouldn't sponsors. We're not bosses of people. We're not parents, but we can influence an expectation of being a part of our teams. And on my team, I don't, I don't really tolerate it, right? And and so deal with it how you handle it how you want. But the energy behind it should be listen, we're in this, guys. When you sign up, you're in it for at least 18 months, and then let's reassess. Okay. Um, the fourth thing that he said was be optimistic, but be optimistic with your intentions, not optimistic about what live good is doing. We are optimistic, right? But I have to defer what corporate is doing to Ben. I have to defer what is happening with the products to Ryan and Lisa. I have to defer what's happening in the field and the marketing and the messaging and the energy to Nodder, right? I have to defer that what i have to be optimistic about is what i'm doing what my intentions are you have to be optimistic about where you're going what your plans are that's what you can be optimistic about i trust that our corporate family they're doing their job right ben's doing this job while he's in the warehouse doing that job like he's doing multiple jobs right now you're watching him he's doing multiple jobs so i don't doubt what they're doing i'm optimistic but are you optimistic in your intentions? You will hit this rank. You will tell two people. You will lose three pounds. You will take the products every day. You will, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is it that you're optimistic about with what you're doing? Okay. And that's all you can do is focus on you. And then the fifth thing um, that Quentin said was give yourself permission to move forward towards your desires. Sometimes we hold our own selves back because it doesn't feel like it's achievable at all, right? And so you automatically self-sabotage. Psychologically, you self-sabotage. And what I want to encourage everyone to do as I close out is just kind of let go, like give yourself permission to do it. You know that you can have anything that you desire, right? You know what desire, right? It comes from the heart. You can have anything that your heart desires, but your heart and, and you and the thing that you want kind of have to start to be on the same page, okay? Like if your heart is saying one thing, but your mind is like, nah, 
it ain't gonna happen. And then, then it's kind of like it's off kilter. There's no balance. There's no alignment. And you have to be in an alignment in order for things to happen the way you want. Otherwise, by default, you always get what you don't want, right? Default, you always get what you don't want. If you don't put in the work to kind of align, like I have to do a for a, alignment on your tires, right? You get new tires, you should do an alignment. Why? Because if you let go of the wheel, you can start going sideways, right? Or <laughs> um, it, your tires will start to, they're, they'll wear unevenly, right? And then you'll need this tire, but not that tire. So it's the same thing. Like you want to be in as much alignment as you can. And you can do that by starting to give yourself permission to, to receive those things that, that you want. So 